In this video, I'll show you how to solve this basic CLTE vulnerability lab using a simple four-step methodology. Because once you understand this methodology, you'll have an easy time solving the other labs, and you'll be able to apply what you've learned in real bug bounties and pen test engagements as well. Let's get started. To solve this lab, we want to target the root endpoint of the application, which is the page we're on right here. So let's switch to burp and go to proxy and HTTP history. And we want the get slash request here for the root and send it to repeater and switch to repeater. And we wanna, before we start our request smuggling, we need to run through a few steps to prepare repeater for request smuggling. And we'll start by downgrading the HTTP protocol to HTTP 1.1. So let's go to the inspector window on the right to request attributes and downgrade the HTTP protocol here. And you'll see that reflected here on the left side. Next thing you wanna do is right click and change the request method to post because we'll be sending data in the request body. And then as an optional step, I'm going to remove some of the optional request headers just because it makes things a bit easier for you to follow along. So anything above content type and underneath the host header, I'm gonna remove. Another thing you wanna do is you wanna to go to the request settings here and make sure that update content length automatically is turned off. And a final tip that I have just for request smuggling in general is to always turn on non-printable characters because they show the carriage return line feeds. And those are important when you're counting content length because the carriage return line feed itself is actually two bytes in length. And it's also easy to have an extra one or a missing one, and that can kind of mess up your request smuggling. So it's always handy to have that on. Now, as a final check before you dive in, just send a request as a sanity check and make sure that you get back a 200 OK. And now you're ready to detect the CLTE vulnerability. And you only need one payload to detect that the front end is using content length and the back end is using transfer encoding. And that's this one right here. And we're using a timing technique where the response to our request will tell us exactly what the front end and back end are using to determine the length of a request. So let's start by adding a request header transfer encoding for a value of chunked, followed by a new line to separate our request headers from our request body. And then we want to indicate that we're sending a chunk of size three bytes, so three, and followed by the content ABC, followed by a new line, followed by the letter X, and another new line. And we also want to set the content length to six to indicate to the front end server if it is using content length that the content has ended after ABC. So let's send this request. And you can already see that we don't immediately get a response. And after a while, after a few more seconds, you'll see that we get a timeout. So let's wait for that to come back. And you can see now server error communication timed out. And this is because the front end, which is using content length, has dropped the X from the request before forwarding it on to the backend. So when our backend receives this request, it will be looking for the next chunk size where the X used to be. But because the next chunk size is missing, the backend will keep the connection open for a while, waiting for that chunk size. And when it finally doesn't arrive, it will time out our request. And that's how we know that the front end server is using content length and the back end server is using transfer encoding chunked. And that means we can send an ambiguous re attack request that the front end and back end server will treat differently. So let's confirm that and solve the lab. And you can use this payload to do that. And that payload will be part of our attack request where you want the front end server to process the entire attack request based on the content length and you want the backend server to process only part of the attack request by sending an early terminating chunk to indicate the end of the chunked message in the form of the zero and the two carriage return line feeds so that the backend is poisoned with what comes after that terminating chunk. And then you can follow up your attack request with a normal request that will be appended to the prefix you've previously poisoned the backend with, and that will solve this lab. So let's start by creating our normal request. I'm gonna to go to proxy and send the same get slash request to repeater again and switch to repeater. And I'm gonna rename this tab to normal request. And we wanna make our normal request as similar as possible to our attack request as we can, because in a real situation, we wanna make sure that it's sent or increase the odds that it's sent to the same backend server. Because if you have different request headers, or a different HTTP protocol, it might be, or you're increasing the odds that it's sent to a different backend server. So make it as similar as possible. So we're gonna to go to request attributes and downgrade the protocol to HTTP 1.1, same as we did before. I'm gonna change the request method to post, and I'm gonna remove the same headers that I did before for the attack request. So anything up from content type and underneath the host header. 
And then in the body, I'm going to uh, add a request body parameter foo for a value of bar. And then I'm just going to send this request to make sure that we get back a 200 OK. And that checks out. So now let's switch to our attack request by going to this tab right here. And I'm also going to rename this tab to attack request. And then we want to remove what we had in our request body before, because we want a new payload where we indicate to the backend server that the chunked message has ended by sending the terminating chunk, so the zero followed by the two carriage return line feeds. And then we want to poison the backend with the prefix G. And now we have to think about the front end server because we want to the front end server to forward the entire request body to the backend server. So the content length we have here is one, two, three, four, five, six. So we can actually leave the content length at the six that we had here previously. That's okay. Another trick you can use is you can just select the text in your request body. And then you can look at the right side here under selection. There's a decimal value of six here for our selected text. So that would be the length in uh, bytes as well. So now this looks good. Let's send this request to our endpoint. And then we're going to go to the normal request and send it as well. And we get back unrecognized method G post. And if we switch to the lab, we can see congratulations, you've solved the lab. I hope this was helpful to you and thank you for watching.